Welcome to part two of what we're reading for February. We are going to jump right in with Misty. I read Two Parts Sugar, One Part Murder, A Delicious and Charming Cozy Mystery, which is part of the Baker Street Mystery um, series. It's book one by Valerie Burns. Is through Kensington. So, you know, putting a little plug in there for Kensington. <laughs> Kensington <laughs> May. Just saying. Just saying. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you a lot about this book because I want you to read it. This book was adorable. It's culinary, which I don't write, but I do really enjoy reading. It has the small town setting. She inherits this shop from her great aunt. In New Bison, Michigan is what the town is called. She has to live there for a year, running a bakery and caring for a 250 pound English Mastiff named Baby. <laughs> oh my God. So we're talking like city girl almost. And I know this is a bad word in some circles, but I'm going to say it anyway. Ticklet. Almost <laughs> ticklet the way it used to be. So she wears like the Louis Vuittons and she is a not used to where she is super fun definitely gets in with her great aunt's people and is making friends and is trying really hard she she doesn't cook and now she's a baker all of a sudden and so a lot of changes that i feel like she made so, that valerie the author made so entertaining i really really enjoyed the dog i enjoyed the setting and i, I enjoyed the the sass i guess is probably <laughs> the best word like those are, that's my kind of thing and so the the mayor gets killed and her fingerprints are on the knife as a first book and as an author i can tell you that i would say a very large percentage of first books in series involve the sleuth being looked at as the murderer because you have to come up with a reason why they would get involved at all. Not everybody can be Jessica Fletcher. You know, not everybody <laughs> writes the crime novels and oh, let's go ask this lady who doesn't know anything but writes sassy books. Let's let's ask her. Let's let her although by the way, you know, if Jessica Fletcher ever came into town running the other way. Yes, definitely. As I've said before, worse than wearing a red shirt in Star Trek. That's just all I <laughs> So, but I really liked the way that she integrated it and the way that the story itself was told. It was just really entertaining, especially, I don't always read in my genre because sometimes it can be hard to like not go, oh, I wish I would have written that. Now I can't write anything <laughs> like it. Gosh darn it. Oh, well, you'd be in a lot of trouble because there are so many cozies. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? But, I mean, you have to be different. I can't yes. go in and write the exact. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is this fresh? Is it um, because... You know, after you've read enough cozies, yes. you start to feel like you're reading the same. You're like, wait a minute, which one is this? Because right. it sounds just like the other one. <laughs> so I'm going to say from my perspective, yes, it is fresh. I am going to state, though, at the same time that I don't read a whole lot of them. Okay. So uh, it could be fresh to me because I haven't read 20 and then read this one. But I don't know. I feel like the vibe in the book itself was new and i mean valerie is a, a an excellent author regardless writer anyway but i really felt like especially as a first book this has like all the pieces that i love it has you know the dog companion it has the bakery and then she also is a social media expert so there's like a lot of hashtagging in there and oh. so so going back to what we talked about with tracy's book the way she thinks is different because of her passion slash job slash what she does. And so where as a baker, you would think of things as being measured and thinking about thinking in baking terms, there's a disconnect for her there a little bit. And so that was, that was really cool to, mm. to, to read through. So I very much enjoyed this book. I highly recommend that you go out and run by read. I, I don't <laughs> tend to listen to a lot of audiobooks, although it does look like it is available. 
through Audible. But yeah, I found myself smiling a lot just at the shenanigans. I love shenanigans. Yeah. And if you can almost get me to snort tea out of my nose, then you have won in my book. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking for Kathy, I know that her and I, we don't do the same thing, but we both work in finance. It is mind numbing sometimes. It so is. Books, listening to audiobooks mm. helps get you through the day. <laughs> well, so I don't, I don't actually listen to audiobooks because I am a document specialist during the day, which if you want to talk mind numbing, let me <laughs> to my world i listen to a lot of youtube but i find that if i am like in the midst of doing spreadsheets that require thought i can block out whole sections of things that i'm listening to because i listen to a lot of youtube like documentaries forensic files that kind of stuff and i will have missed the last five minutes and i'm like whoa wait how did we how do we know that that's the guy who's oh my gosh and i look down and i realized that we're like oh, oh i've done you. that that's oh, yeah. I that's how so I, I get, know a, a book is good is when I don't do that. <laughs> right. So then it's kind of, or I something's get, wrong with the job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just get nervous that I'll have to backtrack over and over again because I, I'll have missed things. So I oh. tend to listen to things during the day that it's okay if I missed it and it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah my job is so rude. It's just goes <laughs> same thing over and over again. But when there is something different and challenging, I can't listen to a book. Yeah, that's right. I, that's the same with me. I do miss things. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't really and, and miss They don't things. like that. No, <laughs> no, not, not in finance. You know, over in the hospitals that I serve, all I'm really doing is checking to make sure that all the documentation is there and I'm counting things. So I'm like, oh, good. There's one, two, three, four, five. Got it. Or when's the last time you scanned a progress note? Why was it one six? I don't know, but I need more than that. <laughs> so I do listen, but sometimes if I'm, like I said, if I'm thinking my way through something, I will miss whole sections and I'm like, gah, all right. got to go um, back and listen. Yes. Again. Yep. Yes. Yes. Now, just did she include recipes? You know, I don't know. I would have to look. I didn't go that far. I read it on the ebook, and oh, I, okay. when, it, when when the book is yeah, they they have recipes. If they do have recipes, okay. Didn't oh, have no. any ice cream recipes. Oh, I have well, to. Uh, that was disappointing. What's <laughs> up with that? And this is book one. Book two is murder is a piece of cake. And that comes out um, in June of this year. So wow. the first one came out August of 2022. And now the second book is coming out in June of 2023. Well, no, no this is her first other... book in a new series. Well, I yes. gotcha. We, yes. We've done her in uh, Cozy Cuisine before in yes. our other series. She has other books out, but this is the one that I that I chose I figured I would start at the beginning. Yeah, so. that's always a good place. I want to say she also, I believe she's also VM Burns. Yes, she is. So yeah, so VM Burns, she has a dog club mystery books series also. I think the first in that is in the dog house. So uh -huh. she's got a lot of different things out. Yep. So, there you go. Very good. Does she have a website? Did you um, have a website? I can. Let me. I think it's I VM Burns. She does. All right. I, I just checked the Malice Domestic. She will be at Malice Domestic. Awesome. Very good. Very good. It is VM Burns. B-U-R-N-S. Does look like she has recipes actually on her website, but I don't see the Valerie Burns books here. Let me go look at. Oh yeah, okay. So under books, she does show the Mystery Bookshop Mysteries, R.J. Franklin Mystery Series, Dog Club Mysteries, and the Baker Street Mysteries. So it looks like she does have both all in the same place. Very good. There you go. All right. Well, I went back to an old friend of the show for my book. It's called The Killing Rain by Faye Snowden. And we did Faye's first book, 
what about two years ago yeah i would say so yeah that was such a good book yes it, it was and it was put out by flame tree press and it came out june of last year well this is a continuation of a killing fire that introduced us to raven burns she was a police detective in bird's landing louisiana now there's my south <laughs> her father was a serial killer oh and he was executed but he lives on in her brain oh and in the last book there was a copycat serial killer who was copying her father's crimes and trying to get her blamed for it. Yikes. So at the end of that book, she went after this guy. She's going to kill him. Well, she's coming back to Bird's Landing. And she had been in California for a while. And it just happens that this Lamont Lavelle, who was the serial killer that was copying her father, he kind of got shot in California. So uh, she's on her oh, way back. Too bad. She <laughs> kind of got shot just yeah. a little. Like I just nicked, <laughs> yeah. I just nicked the corner of his heart. Like that's right, different, right? right? <laughs> just a little artery, you know. <laughs> but she comes back she is no longer a police woman she resigned from this force after all this that happened with the previous book and her partner billy ray who she was very close to he quit the force and she comes back he started a restaurant he's not ever going to be a policeman again and her foster brother cameron he announces that he just found out he has a teenage son oh. that he never knew about, but the mother has died and she wanted him raised by family. So he's going to be a father. She's coming back to all this kind of stuff. Drama. On. But there are boys disappearing in the neighborhood uh Oh, and they're turning up dead. There was one that was found on the courthouse steps. They were washed. No sign of trauma. Oh. Except for a bruise on their forehead. But they were all killed, wrapped in blankets, and then put somewhere. Well, Raven is sort of ignoring all this. She's getting used to being an aunt to this little boy who's, I think he's 13. And then he disappears. Oh, oh, no. Now, the difference is that so far, all the boys who have turned up were white. And, of course, Raven is black and her nephew's black. And so she doesn't think this has any relationship until her nephew's very best friend shows up dead. Oh, and of course he's black. So she goes down to the police department. She gets her badge back. So she's going to find her nephew. Right. She can't believe that he's dead. But there's also a man that shows up and he's from California. Oh, and he's trying to find out who killed Lamont Lavelle. Uh-oh. He has to work with this man to try to find out what's happening because there are just so many questions. And, of course, the police want to look at Cameron, her brother, and they're going to blame him because this child does not fit in the groove that these other disappearing boys have so they think he's probably had something to do with it if raven's not having any of that so 
the characters are so off the wall. There's one character, he's a junk collector, and he said he used to bring the junk home, and now he just goes, his house is so filled with junk, oh. there's no room for anything else. But Sounds has... like my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but this is dead animals. Oh, oh uh, okay. Oh, not, 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 not Paul. That bad. Yeah. Oh, no. it, it's oh, pretty bad. God. I mean, when my I... husband was like that too. He'd bring home <laughs> anything. I got one of those. I actually, for his birthday once, I gave him a, a it was a gag gift, but it's called Roadkill Helper. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not that my husband ever brought any roadkill home, but I just thought it was it really was the epitome of gifts to say, if you don't stop bringing stuff home, you're going to have to make your own food on the manifold. So <laughs> here you go. But this book, it was down home, a lot of food, a lot of love, a lot of music, but there was that underlying question, what happened to these boys? Who did it? And the sheriff doesn't want people investigating certain people. Oh, uh-oh. So when the answers come out, it's very obvious why. And it's it's a good thriller. I recommend Was it shocking to see who, who it was? Well, not shocking, but I wasn't surprised. Okay. okay, well, that's the complete opposite of shock. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the story, after you meet all the characters, and you, if, and when you meet a character, you go, hmm, I wonder if he did it, wonder if she did it. There's a big thing that gives it away about halfway through, but I thought, oh, that's too obvious, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and this is called what again? A killing rain. Yeah, I remember she said she was going to have the elements. Fire, yeah. water. Right. The first book was a killing fire. This is rain. Oh, okay. So, but it's... Who is Earth the author? Faith Snowden. Snowden. Okay. Because there's there's four books called A Killing Rain. <laughs> so really? I just, yeah, there's a... <laughs> it looks like there's only the fire and rain so far. Oh, okay. Yeah. Her books are so good. And you really, you can taste the corn pone when you're reading it. it yeah, you do. Just, do they make grits? They certainly did. Do they do grits um, with what? Butter? I don't. That's all right. I'll read it to find out. I, <laughs> I recommend it. It's, I'll report back. <laughs> you know, I'll be sorry. It's an excellent, excellent book. And Faye Snowden has a website, faysnowden.com, F-A-Y-E Snowden.com. And awesome. you can go back and listen to the episode where we interviewed her. She was a fascinating interview. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so there we got four books. Now well, two, two cozies and two... Intense, not so cozy. Yes, <laughs> intense horrorish no. thriller kind of. Actually, my I, I, I liked kidding. the classification of mine. Somebody said it was grit lit. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Trivia. Last week's question was in the Sue Grafton Kinsey Milhone mystery series. What California town is the fictional town of Santa Teresa based on? A. Santa Rosa B. Malibu C. San Diego or D. Santa Barbara The answer is D. Santa Barbara Grafton's mystery novels featuring Milhone are set in 1980s Santa Teresa, a fictional town based on Santa Barbara, California. This week's question is, what did Anthony Horowitz receive from his mother for his 13th birthday? A. A card. B. A skull. C. A car. Or D. 
a telephone call. Good luck. Well, that brings us to an end of another episode. We have four new books for you to try out. And we hope you join us next week. And remember, life would be boring without a little mystery. Bye. Bye. I did it this time. I know. I wrote it down. For the love of all that's holy, don't forget to say bye. <laughs>